Welcome to our latest video, which talks you through how to set up and complete an online UCAS application. Now this video is aimed at students making an application for the 2023 entry, but also for students who are thinking of taking a deferred entry and starting uni in 2024. So before I take you through how to set up a UCAS account and how to complete an online UCAS application, I just want to recap a few things about the UCAS process in general. Now UCAS is the name of the organisation that processes your university application. They're the go-between between you and the university and they're based in Cheltenham. To apply for university, you have to set up and complete their online application form. And that's what this video is going to focus on. And the UCAS website also contains lots of useful career resources from subject guides to careers quizzes. And it is a very, very good starting point if you're not sure what career or what university course you want to apply for. Now, when you set up a UCAS account, you will be given a UCAS ID number. Now, it's very important you keep this number safe because if you ever ring up the UCAS website and speak to one of their customer service advisors, they will ask you for this UCAS ID number. Also, if you ring up universities about applications, they will also ask you for this UCAS ID number. So it's vital you keep this number safe. Now, before I talk you through how to set up and complete an online UCAS application, I want to talk a little about the UCAS deadlines. Now, if you're an early applicant, i.e. you're someone interested in applying to Oxford, Cambridge or medicine courses, veterinary science courses or dentistry courses, your official UCAS deadline is October the 15th. And for every other course, the official UCAS deadline is January the 25th. It's also worth reminding you that like every other school in the UK, our deadlines are earlier than this. This is because we need to write references for you. We need to work on your personal statement, check your online form. And the other reason is that the earlier that you put in your application, the more chance you will hear back very quickly from the universities with offers. So now let's look at our RADA deadlines. If you're an early applicant applying for Oxford, Cambridge, medicine courses, dentistry courses, or veterinary science courses, our RADA deadline is Friday the 16th of September. And for all other courses, our RADA deadline is Friday the 11th of November. So let's start with the Friday the 11th of November date. As a sixth form team, we have to decide on a date that if everyone in the year group, all 150 of you, turned up in the sixth form study room on the same day asking to process the UCAS forms that we could still meet the January the 25th deadline. So that's why we've decided on an early date, Friday the 11th of November. Now the reality is that many students will get their forms processed and sent off well before Friday the 11th of November. And that means that the sixth form team will be able to process applications after that date because so many would have met Friday the 11th of November as a deadline. And it's common for the sixth form team to send applications right the way through December and even January. Now it's important to stress that the earlier you get your application sent off, the more likely you are to hear back quickly from universities. And many universities will respond to applicants within a few days of sending their UCAS form off. Now, most students in the year group are going to work with their form tutor to get a good personal statement. And it normally takes a few drafts to get a good personal statement. Now, if you're an early applicant, because it's such an early deadline, you're not going to work with your form tutor. You're going to work with a mentor such as Miss Young or Mrs. Robbins, and they will work with you on getting a good personal statement. So it's really important you contact them early so you can meet this Friday the 16th deadline. Now in the rest of this video, we're going to focus on how you set up an online UCAS account and how you complete each aspect of the UCAS application form. 
In the UCAS process, you get to apply for up to five different courses. The only exception to this is if you're applying for medicine, dentistry or veterinary science, where you are only allowed to apply up to four courses. Students who apply for medicine, veterinary science or dentistry courses can put a fifth choice, but it must be for a different course. It can't be another medical school or dentistry school or veterinary science school. Now it's also worth mentioning that you only get the opportunity to write one personal statement. So if you are applying for medicine, dentistry or veterinary science, whatever you apply for for the fifth choice, you will not be able to write a personal statement for that. So the admission tutor of that course will only see your personal statement for medicine, veterinary science or dentistry. However, that isn't a big problem because the sorts of courses that aspiring vets, medics or dentists apply for will be things like biomedical science um, or zoology if you're applying for veterinary science and they're quite closely related and an admissions tutor will just realise that this must be your fifth choice and you probably applied for medicine, dentistry or veterinary science. Occasionally we've had students apply for medicine and their fifth choice has been biomedical science and a university has asked them to write a second statement and email them this statement. There is no facility on the UCAS website to attach a second statement. However, occasionally a university may ask for them in these circumstances. It's also worth mentioning that because you only get one opportunity to write a personal statement, you should apply for courses that are closely related to each other. For example, you might apply for, say, four law courses, and a fifth law course might be Law with French. When you come to write your personal statement, your statement will be mainly why you want to study law, but might touch briefly on your interest in the French language. Now, that would be very easy to do in a personal statement. However, if you applied for one sport course, one chemistry course, one French course, one English course, one geography course, it would be impossible to write a personal statement for this. That's why the five courses you apply for should be as closely related to each other as possible. Now let's show you how to set up a UCAS account. So the first thing you need to do is go onto the UCAS website and that is www.ucas.com and you need to click on the icon that says sign in. Now the sign in icon is in the top right hand corner of the website and it is shown clearly here in this slide. Now once you've clicked on sign in you get to this page and there are two tabs there's a sign in page and a register page. Now as you're registering for the first time on this website you need to set up an account so therefore you click on the register and you put in your email address, your first name, your last name. You'll be asked to create a password and then to confirm this password. And then also you have to tick the box to say you've read and understood the terms and conditions. And then once you've done this, you click on the register button at the bottom of this page. Now when setting up a UCAS account, we suggest you don't use your school email address because your email address gets deleted soon after results day. And you'll want to stay in contact with universities through August, September, October, etc. So you must put in a different email address to your school email address and try to ensure that this email address that you use is a professional sounding email address. So try to avoid having email addresses with nicknames, etc. because you want to create a good impression to whoever is reading your application. Now the next step is verifying your email address. So once you've clicked register, you will be sent a code to your chosen email address and you'll then need to enter this code to verify your account. Now once you've verified your email address, the next step is to answer a few questions to help UCAS as they set up your UCAS hub page. Now these questions are designed to help them find out whether you're interested in just university courses or whether you're interested in apprenticeships as well. Now this first question is asking you in which year do you want to start your studies? Now for most people it will be 2023. 
However, even if you're thinking of a deferred entry, at this stage, we'd still like you to put down 2023 because you can put in a deferred entry at a later date. Now, after putting down 2023, you'll be asked to select a level of study and you need to click on undergraduate. Undergraduate is somebody interested in studying a degree. And if you already had a degree, you'd select postgraduate. So you need to select undergraduate and they'll also ask you if you'd like additional information on apprenticeships or conservatoires. So you're then asked to enter your postcode. And once you've done this, you're then asked a series of questions to set up your preferences for the UCAS hub. So the first of these questions is whether you would like information sent to you about university and college courses, open days, apprenticeships, etc. So if you would, you tick yes. And then you're asked whether you would like details of offers from high street brands, travel offers, tech offers, etc. sent to you. If you'd like this, tick yes. Now, once you've done this, you're asked to enter a mobile number and you're also asked to enter three subjects that you might be interested in studying. Don't worry too much about this because this only sets up your UCAS hub with some information about these three subjects and you can change these at a later date. It's just to get you started. So you're then asked whether you are still at school or college. So you tick yes. And then you're asked to type in your school college. So if you type in RADA, it will automatically come up with RADA Comprehensive School. And then you can click on the Create Account button. Now, once you've answered these questions, you'll have access to your UCAS hub page. And this page is set up depending on how you answered these questions. So for example, the left hand side here, it says your applications and there's a start button. You will click on this when you want to start filling in your UCAS application form. Now notifications will appear on the right hand side and UCAS may send you information about apprenticeships or particular courses they think you might be interested in. Now the hub page also has a tariff point calculator and this is really useful because it will convert grades to UCAS points and vice versa. And this is important when you're researching courses because you want to understand what the entry requirements are for these particular courses. There is also a really good search engine and you'll notice that the courses that I ticked early on when setting up this UCAS hub page. So for example, I said I was interested in chemistry, biological sciences and civil engineering. These appear on this search page. Now on your UCAS hub page, there's also a Your Events page where you're able to search for events such as open days and you will be notified of events near to where you live. Now on your main UCAS hub page, you'll find a personal statement builder to help you write an effective personal statement. You will also find a dates and deadlines section, which is really useful for keeping on top of your application deadlines. There's also a hub live window where you can watch live webinars from universities, organizations and companies. There's also information about apprenticeships and you will also find an excellent quiz called the buzz quiz, which you can take if you're unsure about what sort of careers, courses and jobs you might be interested in in the future. This hub page also has a note section where you can make notes while carrying out research. So we're now going to look at the UCAS application form in detail and we're going to show you how you set up and complete each aspect of the form. So what you need to do next is go to the your application section on the hub page and click the start button. Now, once you've done this, you will see this page where you're asked what type of application you would like to make. And there should be two choices, undergraduate or conservatoire. Now, if you don't see this page, it's because you set up your preferences wrong previously when you were asked to indicate whether you're interested in undergraduate courses or postgraduate courses. So if you don't see conservatoire and undergraduate as options, you need to click the button that says can't see the application type you need and update your preferences. Now you need to click undergraduate here. 
Now, once you click on undergraduate, you will come to this page where you're asked, are you applying from a school, college or centre? So you click yes here. Now, once you click yes, you come to this page and you're asked to enter a buzzword which links your application to a school or college. Now, every school or college has their own buzzword and I've emailed all students the name of this buzzword and all I need you to do is enter this buzzword so that UCAS knows you go to Radar Comprehensive School. Now, if you can't remember the buzzword, the buzzword is also listed in our Radar UCAS handbook. So if you go to the Radar UCAS handbook, you'll find the buzzword, enter the buzzword, and as soon as you do this, UCAS will recognize this and it will ask you, do you go to Radar Comprehensive School? So once you see this page, you click yes and your UCAS application is now linked to the RADA Comprehensive School UCAS site. So the next thing you need to do is to select a group and by group we mean your form group. So from the drop down menu select your form group and this helps us organize the applications by form group which is really important to us when we write references and process application forms. Now, once you've selected your form group, you will have access to your main home page for making an application. And on the top right of this page, you will have your personal ID number. So it's really useful to make a note of this because when you speak to UCAS or have contact with the university, they will ask you for this personal ID number. So your main application home page looks like this. You can search for courses at the top right of this page. You can add choices in terms of the universities that you want to apply for by just clicking the add choice button. And then the various sections of the application form are shown clearly here. So there's a personal details section, a contact and residency details section. There's an education section, employment section, nationality details, support and information, English language skills, finance and funding, and then your personal statement and you complete each section of the form and once you've completed this you tick to say that the section is completed. Now when every section is completed you then have the option to send your UCAS form to your referee who will then check your form with you and process your application. So the first section to fill in is your personal details section. So you are asked to put in your title, Mr or Miss, your first name, your last name, a preferred name if you have one, a date of birth, your gender, and then you save this section and you tick the box to mark the section as complete. Now when you complete different aspects of the UCAS form it's important you remember to do this because if you don't mark the section as being complete you won't be able to send your form to your referee. So it's important after completing each section that you mark the section as complete. Now the next section to complete is your contact and residency details. So the first thing you need to do is put a contact number. You have to provide a contact number when you fill out a UCAS application form. You have a box to put in another telephone number. Your email address should appear in the box because you've already put this address in when you registered. You can change this email address if you want to on your UCAS profile. There's a postal address section so you put in that it's a UK address and then put in your postcode and then it will find your address for you and you select it from the drop down menu. Now the next question you're asked is whether you want to nominate somebody to be able to act or speak on your behalf about your application to universities or to UCAS itself and we recommend that you take this option and you tick the yes box. Now the nominated access person is normally a parent or guardian and if you tick yes you have to put the full name of your nominee so you put the full name and the relationship to you so it could be mother father brother sister etc now the next question you're asked is related to residency details and you're asked is your home address the same as your postal address so if it is click yes and then you're asked to select your area of permanent residence. 
So there's a drop down menu here. So I've selected Cardiff and then the residential category. I've selected UK citizen Wales. Now, once you've completed this section, save the section and mark this section as complete. So once you've completed this, you'll be asked your nationality details. You'll be asked what is your country of birth. You'll be asked to put in your nationality. You can put in dual nationality here on this part of the form. And then you save this section and mark this section as complete. So the next section you'll be asked to put in will be the support and information section. So you're asked, have you ever lived or worked in the EU, excluding the UK or the European Economic Area or Switzerland? So most people will answer no here. You'll then be asked, do you have a parent, step parent, spouse or civil partner who is an EU, excluding the UK, EEA or Swiss national? Most people will put no here. And then you save this section and mark it as complete. So the next part of this section focuses on English language skills. So you're asked whether English is your first language. If it is, you tick yes. If it's not, you tick no. And if you do tick no, you have the option to put down whether you've sat any English proficiency tests and you can add your certificate numbers and UCAS will pass them on to your chosen universities and colleges. So if Welsh is your first language, you click no and you leave all the remaining fields blank that are related to language tests. Once you've completed this section, you save it and mark the section as complete. So the next section is your finance and funding section. So you're asked to select an option from the drop down list to tell how you expect to pay for your tuition fees. Now, most applicants will select the UK, Channel Islands, Isle of Man or EU Student Finance Services option. So click on this. We've never had anyone select any other option. Now, the next section is student support arrangements. So for this, you need to select the town or city that you live. So there's a drop down menu. So I've selected Cardiff here. You mark the section as complete and then you save this section. The next section is a diversity and inclusion section. So there's a series of questions to answer here. And if there are any questions you don't want to answer, you can select the option that you prefer not to say. Now in the final part of the diversity inclusion section, you're asked, have you been in care? Yes or no. You're also asked if any of your parents, step parents or guardians have higher education qualifications, such as a degree, diploma or certificate of higher education. And finally, you're asked the occupation or background of your parent, step parent or guardian who earns the most if you're under 21. If she or he is retired or unemployed, give their most recent job title. And if you prefer not to give the information, just enter. I prefer not to say. Once you've completed this section, you mark the section as complete and save this section. Now this next section more about you is an optional section. Now every year over 60,000 students with a physical and or mental health condition, long term illness or learning difference apply for UCAS to study at a university or college in the UK and they access a range of support available to help them with their studies, day to day activities, travel or lifestyle. And in this first question, you're asked to consider whether you live with any of the following conditions or learning differences that are listed here. Now, this question and the others that follow are designed to help student support services give you the support you need at university. And the next question is, would you consider yourself estranged from your parents, i.e. not in contact with or supported by parents? And this is a yes or no question. And then you're asked, do you have any care and responsibilities? Yes or no. And finally, you're asked, are you a parent or do you have parenting responsibilities? So again, this is a yes or no question. So the remaining part of the more about you section asks you a series of questions such as do you have official refugee status or limited leave to remain or are you seeking asylum? It asks you, do you have a parent or carer who currently serves in the UK armed forces or who has done so in the past? You're also asked if you ever served in the UK armed forces and then you're asked, are you currently receiving free school meals or have you been in receipt of free school meals during your secondary education? Once you've completed this section, mark it as complete and save this section. 
So we're now going to look at the education section of the UCAS form. So for the education section, you need to click on the following button where you're able to add a place of education. So you need to add a school where you've studied and received qualifications. So for most of you, you'll just add one school, rather comprehensive. However, some of you may have studied previously at another school and taken your GCSEs at that school. And in that case, you would add that school as well because you've studied there and received qualifications. So click on the button and then we'll show you how to put in rather comprehensive school as your school. So once you've clicked add a place of education, you come to this page, you enter the name of the school, so rather comprehensive school, the exam center number will automatically appear and then you need to put in the start date and the end date of your time at RADA. So for most of you, your start date will be September 2016. So it's 09 2016. And your end date will be A-level results day in August in 2023. So you put in 08 2023. And then you're asked whether you're a full-time or part-time or sandwich student. So you tick full-time. Now the last question you're asked is whether you will have any qualifications from the centre, so you tick yes, and then you press save. So I've added Rada Comprehensive School now to the education section, and you will be faced with this screen. Now you'll notice that you can add qualifications if you click on the blue button. You can also add another place of education. You're asked to put in your unique learning number, and you're asked to state the highest level of qualification you expect to have before you start your course that you're applying for. So the unique learning number, the ULN number, can be obtained from your form tutor because we will email these out to your form tutor. You can also obtain it from Mrs. Perks or you can obtain it from our exams officer, Mrs. Davis. Now for the next bit is ask you, please state the highest level of qualification you expect to have before you start your course. There's a drop down menu. Now before you start your university course, you will have below honours degree level qualifications because you won't have a degree previously. So you tick that box. So all you need to do now is add qualifications. So click on the blue button. Now, once you click the add qualification button, you will come to this page and you will see our qualification shortlist. Now we have set this up with popular qualifications that are studied at Radar Comprehensive School. And this makes it much easier for you to enter the qualifications that you've studied previously and you currently study in. Now you can see we've added BTEX here to the qualification shortlist. We've added GCE advanced level, A levels. We've added AS levels, which is GCE advanced subsidiaries. We've added GCSE, GCSE short courses, GCSE double award, because many of you will have studied science double award at GCSE. Now, if you study a WJC level three certificate or diploma, these have also been added to the qualification shortlist. So for example, for health and social care, you are studying the level three applied certificate that's worth the same as 1A level. For criminology, you're studying a WJC Level 3 Applied Diploma. That's the equivalent of an A level. And for food science and nutrition, you're studying the WJC Level 3 Applied Diploma. And once again, that's equivalent to 1A level. Now, we also know that many of you are studying the WJC Level 3 Business Course, and that's also listed in our qualification shortlist. It's listed as WJC Level 3 Applied Diploma in Business. Now, in addition to this, you're all studying the Welsh Baccalaureate, and that is called the Welsh Baccalaureate Advanced Skills Challenge Certificate, and that's listed there in the qualification shortlist. Now, at RADA 6 Form, if you're studying a BTEC subject, the option you pick depends on the subject. So, for example, if you're studying IT, that is a BTEC subsidiary diploma QCF because you're studying the old course that doesn't have exams in them. And if you're studying applied science or sport, you select Pearson BTEC Level 3 National Extended Certificate RQF. 
2016 to present and that is the option where there are exams in the course. So those are both listed in the qualification shortlist. Now if you've studied for qualifications that are not listed here, you can search for your qualifications by just typing the name of it in the toolbar at the bottom here and then you can add that qualification in. And the UCAS database has qualifications from all over the world. So even if you've studied overseas, that's no problem at all. They will be able to find that qualification. So the first qualifications we want you to add are the A-levels or equivalent qualifications such as BTECs, diploma, certificates that you study in the year 13. So click on GCSE Advanced Level if you're studying an A-level in year 13 and you'll then be asked to enter the name of that A-level. Now, math students may already have taken a full A-level and completed it if they're studying the further maths option. So if that applies to you, you also click GCSE Advanced Level and you would enter the maths qualification here. So to enter an A-level, first of all, you have to put the name of the subject. So I'm putting chemistry here. And then you put the qualification date. So you get A-level results in August. So your qualification date for your A-level will be August 2023. So that's 08 2023. Then you have to put in the award in organization, so the exam board, so it's WJC, and you put the grade down as pending because the result is in the future. Now, the way that UCAS forms work is that whenever you put a qualification down as pending in terms of the grade, it means that your teacher or referee will then be able to put a predicted grade for you for that qualification. Now you don't need to put any modules down here and once you've entered the information you can save the qualification by clicking on the blue button or you can save and add another qualification. So I want you to click save and add another qualification here. So you can see that chemistry is now listed with a qualification date as August 2023. And if I click the button add qualification, I can add more A-levels or BTECs or level three diplomas. So I'm now gonna show you how to add one of the new BTECs. So we're doing a new BTEC in sport and applied science. And these are called BTEC level three extended certificates. And you can see it's shown here on this slide, Pearson BTEC level three national extended certificate RQF. So when I click on the extended certificate option, you can see you come to this page. So I'm going to put down that I'm studying applied science and I'm going to put a qualification date of August 2023. So it's 08 2023. The award in organization is Pearson and I'm going to put the grade down as pending because I will get the result on A-level results day and BTEC results day, which is in August. So you have to remember to save the page once you've added a qualification and then you can add more qualifications here by clicking on the add qualifications button. Now, as I said previously, if you're studying IT, it's the old BTEC, the level three BTEC subsidiary diploma. And you can see that the BTEC subsidiary diploma QCF is in the shortlist menu. So you can select that option if you study IT. Now, many of you are studying level three WJC vocational courses, such as food, business, criminology, and health and social care. And these are listed in the qualification shortlist. Now, food, business, and criminology are level three applied diplomas. And you can see these are listed in the shortlist. And the health and social care course is an applied certificate. Now, all of these, even though they have different names, are equivalent to one A level. So here I've clicked on the level three applied diploma in criminology and I've come to this page. I once again have to put in my qualification date, 08, 2023. The award in organization is WJC and the grade is pending. Once again, I don't need to put any modules here. I just have to put the main qualification listed. Now you can see that the three qualifications I've already added appear on this slide. And if I want to add more qualifications, I simply click the add qualification button. 
Now you'll notice that when you add a BTEC qualification, a new box appears and this is a BTEC registration number box and you can obtain your BTEC registration number from your BTEC subject teacher or our exams officer, Mrs. Davis. Now it's important that you add this number because this number allows the university to check your qualification and your qualification result. So the next stage of filling out the education section is to put down any AS subjects that you've studied and also the grades that you achieved. So to add an AS qualification, you go to our qualification shortlist and you click on GCE Advanced Subsidiary. So when you click on GCE Advanced Subsidiary, you come to this menu. So I'm going to put in the subject chemistry. I'm going to put a qualification date as 08-2022. The award in organisation is WJC. And I'm going to put the grade down as pending. However, if you were watching this video after results day in August, you'll be able to put the actual grade down that you achieve. But if you're watching this before August, put the grade down as pending. So now you've added your AS qualifications, the next thing to do is add your GCSE results. So you can see there's three options here. There's GCSE in the qualification shortlist, there's GCSE short course, and there's GCSE double award. Now, for most of your GCSEs, you're going to click the GCSE option here. However, if you study double science, you need to click the GCSE double award option. Now, if you study triple science or GCSE, you click the GCSE option and you will have separate grades for biology, chemistry and physics. In this school, we don't really do short courses. However, you might have studied a GCSE short course at another school. So I'm going to show you now how to add in your double award science if you studied double science. So you would put in science. You would put in your qualification date, which was August 2021, so it's 08-2021. You would put your award in organisation, WJC, and then you'd select the grade that you achieved. So there's two grades for double science, so I'm selecting A, B here. So I'm going to save the qualification, but I can also save and add another if I'm adding another GCSE. So now you need to add all your GCSEs in turn. So I'm going to put in my mathematics numeracy qualification and that's listed here. So I'm going to put the qualification date as 08-2021. I'm going to put the award and organisation as WJC and I'm going to put down that I had an A star here. So I'm going to save the qualification or I can click save and add another. So now add all your remaining GCSE grades and remember that the exam board is WJC and the qualification date is 08-2021. And once you've done this, the qualifications that you're studying in year 13 should appear first, and then any qualifications that you're studying in year 12, such as ASs, will appear, and then your GCSEs will appear last. Now, it's also worth mentioning that many of you who have joined us from other schools would have studied your GCSEs at a different school. That's no problem at all. You just add this school in the education section and then add your GCSEs underneath that school. So your form would have rather comprehensive listed and the qualifications you're studying in year 13. Also, it would have the qualifications you sat in year 12 and your grades. And then a different school would be listed and underneath this different school, you would have your GCSE results. Now, if you study any qualifications at a partnership school in year 12 or year 13, you still put it down that you're at Radha Comprehensive School because that's your main school. So you don't add this partnership school. Now, you must also remember to add the Welsh Baccalaureate Skills Challenge Certificate to your education section. So once again, you'll find this listed in our qualification shortlist. So click on Welsh Baccalaureate Advanced Skills Challenge Certificate. So once you click on this, you'll come to this page. So it'll list the Welsh Baccalaureate Advanced Skills Challenge Certificate. Then you put the qualification date 08-2023. The award in organisation is WJC. And once again, you put the result as pending. And when you put any result as pending, your teacher or referee will be able to put a predicted grade for you. 
Now, don't forget to include the Welsh Baccalaureate that you studied at GCSE. Now, this is called the WJC National Skills Challenge Certificate. Some of you may have studied the Foundation Skills Challenge Certificate. So click on this option from the qualification shortlist. Now, once you've clicked on this option, you'll put in the qualification date 08-2021. The awarding organisation is WJC and you put your grade down. So I've put down an A here. Now, in addition to mathematics and mathematics numeracy, some students may have taken an additional mathematics qualification. This is called a WJC Level 2 Certificate in Additional Mathematics, and I've added this to the Qualification Shortlist menu. So if you did study additional maths, click on the WJC Level 2 Certificate icon here, and then add the qualification with the exam board is WJC and the qualification date is 08-2021. Now, if you've studied other qualifications that I've not mentioned here, you can search for these in the search bar, which is on the education section. And if you can't find the qualification from the UCAS database, you can type in other, and then you will get this menu. And if you click on other UK qualifications, you're able to add this qualification in free text. Now, once you've added your qualifications in the education section, you must add your ULN number. You must also add your BTEC registration number if you study in a BTEC qualification. And the last question you're asked is to state the highest level of qualification you expect to have before you start your university course. So the option here you need to select is below honours degree level qualifications because before you start your university course, you won't already have a degree. Once you've entered all this information, tick that the section is complete and then save this section. Now, if you've had any part-time jobs, the next section to complete after the education section is the employment section. So to add an employer, just click add employment. Now, once you do this, you come to this page where you're asked to put in the company or organization name, your role in the organization, the company or organization address, and the start date and finish date. You're also asked whether your position was full-time or part-time. So when you've entered these details, you just press save. Now, as part of this section, you have the opportunity to add an activity that you've undertaken in preparation for higher education. So for example, you might've attended a summer school or a taster course that you would like to add to your UCAS form. So if so, just click add activity. So once you click on this button, you come to this page and you put in the type of activity. So for example, a summer school I've put in here and you put the activity provider. So I'm putting Sutton Trust, could they run the summer school? And I put the name of the activity program. So it was a Sutton Trust Biosciences summer school that I'm entering. And I put the start and end date of this activity. Now, like all other pages, it's important to save the information before you go on to add any more activities. So the next section on the form is where you write your personal statement. Now, the personal statement is a maximum of 47 lines, 4,000 characters, and we recommend that you write your personal statement in Microsoft Word and you use Word when working with your form tutor. And when your form tutor is happy with your personal statement, you paste it across into the UCAS website. So when you paste the statement in from Microsoft Word, it tells you how many of the 47 lines you've used and whether you are under in terms of characters or over. And you should save this then. And if you press save and preview, you will see the statement in this format. If you're happy with the statement, you will mark this section as complete and then you will save this section. For you to send your UCAS form to your referee, this section will need to be marked as complete. Now, when you've completed the different sections of the UCAS form and marked these sections as completed, they will show up on your profile as section complete and it will be green with a tick. Now, the next thing to do is to add your choices. 
the university courses that you wish to apply for. Now once you've decided on a course and you want to add it to your UCAS form, you click the button Add Choice and then you will have this page where you can select the university, you can select the course, it will automatically come up with the course code for you and the details. So you can see that this is a three year full time course and it's an honours degree course. You then select the location from the drop down menu. So this is main site Cardiff. The start date will automatically be populated. Now your start date will either have a date in 2023 or if you choose to apply now but go to university a year later, so a deferred entry, you will select a date in 2024. Now there's also a further details box which only needs populating if your university or college has asked you to put information into this box. There's also a point of entry box which means which year of the course you're going to start in. Now most people are going to start in year one of that course so you put down first year. If you were studying a foundation year you would put zero into this box. And the last question is are you living at home while studying? And this is a yes or no question. Once you put this information in, just save it. Now you can have five choices through UCAS. You don't have to have five. If you're applying for medicine, dentistry or veterinary science, you can only apply to four institutions for these courses. And your fifth choice therefore must be for a different course. Now you can see here, I've picked courses that are chemistry related because my personal statement is going to be for chemistry related courses. I can't write more than one personal statement. So that's why it's important to have courses that are very closely related. Now it's also worth mentioning that you don't rank these courses in order of preference. The universities don't see where else you've applied and that's really important because some people do think that universities get to see where else you've applied. They don't, they have no access to this. They only see that you've applied to them. Now, when you've completed all your choices, you can click confirm choices and you can edit or delete a choice at any time by clicking on the three dots. Now, once you've completed all the sections of your UCAS form and your form tutor is happy with your personal statement, they will ask you to paste the personal statement from Microsoft Word into the UCAS website so you can check that it fits the word count. You will then print a copy of that personal statement off from the UCAS website to show your form tutor that it fits the word count. They will then sign the form. You will take it to your referee and your referee then will paste your reference that they've written from all your subject teacher's comments to the UCAS website. They will check your personal statement with you. They will try to make it better. They will also go through your form to check you filled everything in correctly. And then they will read you your reference and your predicted grades. Now, if your referee finds any errors in your UCAS form or on your personal statement, they will be able to send your form back to you via UCAS. You can then correct these errors. Now, when you and your referee are both happy with your UCAS form and personal statement, your form will be sent to the universities via UCAS and you can follow the progress of your application via something called UCAS Track. Now, for you to be able to send your form to your referee via UCAS, all these sections will need to be green, showing that the sections have been completed you do not have an option to send your form to your referee if any of these sections are not completed. Now, once you've completed all aspects of the UCAS form, it should say that your profile is 100% complete. Your choices will be listed on this screen. And if you are happy with them, you can click on the review and submit button. This button is currently not available and it will only become available in mid-September when applications open. Now it's important to stress that when you click on the submit button, the application comes to your referee. It does not get sent to the university. So don't worry about it. If you think there might be mistakes or errors, 
It doesn't get sent to the university. It comes to your referee first. It's your referee that sends your form and it will only be sent when you're happy for it to be sent. Now, when you send your UCAS form to your referee, you will need to pay the UCAS administration fee and you do this online by a credit or debit card. So that concludes this video. So it just remains for me to wish you good luck with your application and remember to take advantage of all the support available from your form tutors, from your referees, from your subject teachers, etc.